we've got a bit of a weird video for today, but unusual for this channel. As you've seen on the title, this is all to do with Onshape. If you've never heard of Onshape, it's a relatively new 3D card modeling application, which is entirely cloud hosted and it runs in a browser, meaning there's no local install. Onshape was founded by the founders of SolidWorks. So the old CEO of SolidWorks has moved on and founded Onshape and uh, this is his new baby. And it's never really been on my radar at all up until this point for multiple reasons. So um, I'm going to talk about that and why and what I think about it. And that's what this video is all about. It's just my thoughts and opinions. There's no, it's not a review of Onshape. It's not a, a guide. It's not a tutorial. It's nothing like that. It's just my thoughts and opinions. A hell of a lot of waffling and my thoughts and opinions on it based off of an Autodesk user's perspective. Uh, and if you've never come across anything from this channel before, this channel is 100% Autodesk bias, pretty much. I don't work for them, but my entire career has been Autodesk focused and I'm also an Autodesk customer. I manage the CAD systems in two huge engineering companies that are Autodesk customers. So I guess you could say in a way I could be a target demographic for Onshape. They, they could see me as a potential customer. So it's also in their interests, perhaps to see what the likes of myself think about their CAD package. So uh, that's really what I'm doing this for. It's just uh, my initial thoughts and first impressions on what it's like and what I think of them in their market and spiel. So before today, I, they'd never been on my radar. I have seen many people mentioning Onshape in the comments of my videos because at its core, it's a free CAD modeling package. So people ask about it, what I think of it, is it worth their time looking into it? And honestly, I've never given it a second thought. About four or five months ago, I did land on their front page after reading a few comments in a row and think, oh, what's all? The, what's the fuss here? What What is on shape? I've never heard of it. I'll go and look it up. And then I landed on their website and I read this line here, Modern CAD Finally. It was the first thing I read, obviously, because it's right in your face. And I thought, what? Who, who do you guys think you are? You can't just come out of nowhere and say Modern CAD Finally. Because at the time, I didn't know, the, the, it did, not that it makes much of a difference, but I didn't know they were founded by the SolidWorks, the old SolidWorks CEO. Uh, but I just thought, you can't just come out of nowhere and dismiss everything else as being old and obsolete, and you're now the modern benchmark in CAD. You've got to earn that kind of status. You can't just say it and make it true. So I, I just thought, nah, nah, the hell with that. Nah, no time for that. I'm not entertaining that. So I just moved on and forgot about it, really. Until yesterday. What happened yesterday was... Uh, in a LinkedIn group that I'm part of. Uh, this sales manager from Onshape posted an ROI calculator for Onshape. Uh, a bit of a naughty, stealthy ad in the LinkedIn group. He was weeded out for it. It was not very nice. But, um, it's not very appreciated in LinkedIn groups to do that. But yeah, an ROI calculator, it's nothing special really. It seems quite normal until you get down to the bottom. And then I read this here, yeah, calculating ROI of Onshape versus SolidWorks. And that piqued my interest. That kind of perked me up and I thought, whoa, hang on a minute, that changes the dynamics here. Onshape versus SolidWorks, because up until now, knowing that Onshape is a web-hosted 3D card modeling application, it's all web browser-based, I thought they were pitching themselves at sort of Fusion level, Google SketchUp level, but they genuinely think they're a competitor to SolidWorks now. And also, given that SolidWorks and Inventor are kind of like this, they're head-to-head -head and very, very much on an even playing field, that by default, I guess, suggests that Onshape think they're playing in the same league as Inventor as well. So that puts it on my radar, like I said before, as an Autodesk customer managing roughly 400 seats of, of Autodesk Inventor, 400 engineers using Inventor. Um, they think Onshape could potentially be a replacement for what I manage? Hmm, okay, right, I'll see what it's all about and take a look at it a bit closer. Um... So when you go into this PDF here, this ROI calculator, it's a it's a lot of spiel. Obviously, it's a it's a sales document essentially, but they gave president of examples of, of switching clients over from SolidWorks to Onshape. So they genuinely they they are serious here that they are now a feasible alternative to SolidWorks and Inventor, and they claim to have moved clients from SolidWorks onto Onshape. So I thought, right, okay, I'll have a look into Onshape, see what it's all about and give it a chance. So yesterday I spent roughly four or five hours playing around with Onshape and um, I've got mixed feelings on it. Really do have mixed feelings on it. Now in terms of pricing, it's a very bizarre pricing model. Very bizarre. Onshape is free. It's free for personal use. Uh, it's also free for business use as well, but 
anything that you create, if you're not paying for Onshape, is public. You cannot design anything and keep it secret, I guess. It's all hosted in the cloud. Anything that you make is available for anyone to copy and save and reuse. If you want to keep your IP secret, which most companies do, you have to pay for it. And unfortunately, the first priced plan is $1,500 per user per year. So you go from free up to $1,500 per year, and that is outrageous pricing, absolutely outrageous. Bear in mind that Inventor is 1935. They're only $435 less than Inventor. And now $435 is a lot of money, but when you when you buy in for say 100 users, for example, it's not that much less really. Um, nobody pays that obviously for 100 Inventor users, you get bulk discount, but they're, they're pricing themselves in the same ballpark as Inventor and, and SolidWorks, I guess. And I don't think they deserve to be at that level. They've only been around for three years. I think the first commercial release of Onshape launched in December 2015, I believe. So it's not even three years old yet. Uh, Inventor's been around for almost 20 years. It's got a lot of R&D behind it. Uh, Onshape is missing a lot of features. It's missing a lot of both base functionality in terms of sketching, modeling, constraints, that kind of thing. But it's also missing massive modules like rendering, simulation, CAM, that kind of thing. So to be charging that kind of money and just saying, hey, we were founded by the guy who made SolidWorks, so uh, obviously we deserve to be priced at this point. No, you, no, 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 it doesn't work like that. Uh, most companies, however, most enterprises, I, I don't know what this is about, honestly. I kind of choked when I saw that and I thought, 20, no, I don't know what that's about. Uh, but this one here, 2100, that's for their 3D CAD and their PDM. So you'll get the Onshape 3D modeling package, but you also get revision control, um, approval processes, that kind of stuff. So that is essentially Inventor and Vault Workgroup rolled into one. Whereas Inventor 1935, Vault Workgroup 345, they're only $180 cheaper than Inventor and Vault Workgroup. They, as far as I can see, do not have any right to be pricing themselves at that level for such an immature product with so many risks associated to it, which obviously we'll get to that later on. And for only $400 more, you can buy product design collection. <laughs> In product design collection, you get obviously Inventor, you get uh, the nesting utility, you get a full cam solution, you get AutoCAD. And it, I know a lot of people don't want to design an AutoCAD, but you may lose projects if you don't have the ability. We may lose bids, I should say, if you don't have the ability to deliver the final result in native AutoCAD format. Some clients demand that the final product is delivered in a 2D DWG native AutoCAD format and not just converted either. In It's done in an AutoCAD format so that they can maintain it later on if they have AutoCAD. Uh, but it's always good to have that. Um, and you can maybe subscribe to AutoCAD LT, but it's still not going to be a hell of a lot cheaper. Uh, NASTRAN, that's NASA Structural Analysis, which is not quite at the level of ANSYS, but it's almost on par with ANSYS. You get that with the Product Design Collection. Factory Design Utilities, you get Vault Basic, which is basic PDM. You don't get revision control and approval workflows with Vault Basic, but it's local SQL-based data management. Uh, Fusion 360 for web-hosted... I guess anywhere level 3D CAD, Navisworks Manage, Project Management, you've got 3D Studio Max, which is pretty much the best rendering package in the world. Uh, point Cloud Management, you've got Cloud Storage, Cloud Rendering. All of that for only $400 more than Onshape are wanting for their pretty new 3D CAD package and their PDM. It's a rough deal. It's very difficult to understand where they're getting this from even at half the price. If that was half the price, I'd still be questioning what, why they believe they think they're at that level. Um, and then going over to their web page, their, their main front page, this is where as a customer, so I'm speaking as a customer here, if they, if, if they think that they are a serious alternative to SolidWorks and Inventor, this is the area here where they need to grab me by the balls and say, right son, you're, you're laughing at us, but this is why we're serious. And this is why we think we can be considered as an alternative to what you're using right now because there's very few startups now. There's going to be very few companies who are looking for a brand new CAD system from scratch. The massive majority of their business 
and I guess what they they've put in their pipeline they're going to be they're going to be looking to target customers who have already got a CAD system and they want to switch over. That is that's where the money's at. New startups, it's not really going to be much money there. It's going to be the transitions. So they need to tell me here on this page why they are a, a feasible alternative for a big engineering company to switch from Inventor or SolidWorks over to OneShape. And I've looked obviously I've looked through this and I'm sorry, but it's all absolute nonsensical BS. It's absolute bollocks. Uh, what it looks like they're doing here and forgetting about how good the product is for a second and what their pros and cons are reading this page and all the other marketing material that's across this website in my opinion it seems like they're using scare tactics or fear tactics to scare people into using a product that they don't necessarily need they're inventing and fabricating problems where there are no problems that's what it feels like they're doing rather than using the merits of the software to sell it if the product was that good they shouldn't need to fear people into in going for this so a good example of that would be the the reference statements that they've taken from uh, their reference sites they're like bard you Anthony. if bard ever does watch this i'm sorry i know you were just given a, a statement you were asked to give a statement because you're a, a good customer of onshape as a you know as a reference site but literally everything you've said here mate is it's absolute nonsensical bollocks uh it's just not true so bard has said i've experienced the pains of traditional cad the frustration of checking in and out enormous files uh that look mate i could go to town on this for for hours but in short any engineering company of a decent size, and that's worth its salt, should have a gigabit LAN installed and decent infrastructure between client and server. So at worst, in our sites, we've got maybe 10,000, 15,000 part assemblies, absolutely huge data sets. On a gigabit LAN, it doesn't take us long at all to check that data set in and out from uh, you know, a local vault server or a local file server. It's just not an issue anymore. You do get issues with people who've got dirty released files that can't check in because they've been dirty locally, but you can manage that with better user training and just more care and attention when, you, when you've when you got your files checked out. So that's not really a thing anymore. There is no such thing. You know, enormous files, Inventor files, SolidWorks files, IPTs, IEMs, they're not that big. They're not that big. It's 2018. When you've got a two megabyte file or a 10 megabyte file, they're not that big. So that's not really a thing anymore. Time consuming updates. Now this one made me chuckle because again, that's another example of trying to invent a problem that doesn't really exist or doesn't have to exist. Any CAD administrator or any IT administrator worth their salt should never bring a company offline so that they lose time in their working day to deploy updates or to migrate platforms. We plan it well in advance and we'll take a company offline at the end of the working day on a Friday do the work Friday night over Saturday over Sunday so that on Monday when the company comes back online everything's done and finished. If we've got incremental service packs and updates we do it outside of working hours. We'll never bring companies offline to deploy updates to local applications installed on desktops. That's not a thing mate, that's not a thing and if you've got somebody working locally in your company who brings you offline to deploy service packs and updates then you've got to, you've, that's on you mate, that's on you and you've got to question that person but it's something that can and should be done out of working hours. So that's not a problem that needs to be used to dismiss old CAD systems as being obsolete now. That's not a thing. And then the dreaded backwards incompatibility problem. Again, I had a little chuckle at this one because, yes, you can't send, or it's not easy to send a file from, say, for example, Inventor 2019 to a company who's using Inventor 2015. But honestly... I can't think of any instances in the last few years where we've needed to do that because if we're working with another company and they ask for one of our inventor files, very rare do we give them the native file due to IP issues. So if they're using Inventor 2015, we need to send them a file. We'll send them it in a step format. We'll send them it in JT format or a 3D PDF. Very rare will we give them the native inventor file. If it's internal, Nobody works internally on different levels of a CAD system. Everyone's migrated in the same company up to the same level. So there are no backwards compatibility problems internally. It's all to do with sending files to other companies. And guess what, mate? You're using Onshape. How many other companies do you know that you're working with that use Onshape? So I'd argue you're going to have more issues sending data or transmitting data now that you're on Onshape than before whatever you were using before that. So he's finished with simply put, using Onshape doesn't give me headaches. 
Well, we're kind of ignoring the elephant in the room here, mate, and that is that Onshape is 100% tethered to the internet. If you lose the internet, you lose your CAD system. That is the biggest headache you could possibly have. If we lose our internet, if we lose any of our server infrastructure on our old CAD systems, we can carry on working. You can't, mate. Your website the website goes offline. Onshape goes offline. You end up with the little chrome dinosaur. In fact, I'll do it, mate. Watch. All right, so here's here's my Ethernet status, right? So I'm going to hop on over to Onshape. There's Onshape, which is 100% hosted in the cloud. If I disable my internet connection, Onshape just dies immediately. Say somebody drives a JCB bucket through the cables outside and the internet goes offline for you don't know how long. Onshape is now offline. Refresh the browser, boom, it's gone. You've got no local cache. You've got no local uh, cached instance of Onshape that can let you carry on working. No, Onshape's dead. You cannot work. Who, who wants this? In what world is this a good idea? In what world is this not a headache? And in what world is this being sold as a better alternative in business than an old CAD system? This introduces infinitely more risk than whatever risks you're claiming are dangerous on an, on an old CAD system. So, no, mate, no, Onshape does not remove all your headaches. If anything, it's going to give you more headaches. Right, so we're back online. So, yeah, with regards to this, not having any headaches, I mean, let's just say, for example, someone does drive a bucket through the outside lines. You've then got to find out how the problem was, how the problem occurred. You've got to get in touch with IT. You've then got to get in touch with the ISP. You've then got to find out which contractor drove the bucket through the cable. Is the problem at your end? Is it at the ISP end? These are all headaches at multiple points that you can really do without having, that you don't have with a local CAD system. So to say that Onshape doesn't give you any headaches is outright objectively not true and to be honest going through the the rest of the statements on here it's pretty much more of the same it's using scare tactics uh, to make people feel like they're, they're fixing problems that really aren't a thing uh, like no downloads installs license keys service packs of compatibility issues everyone has the latest version okay that is arguably a good thing but it can also be a bad thing say on shape develop a, a new version of the platform that deploy it uh, into the netcode and then all of a sudden everybody inherits a bug that they've got absolutely no control over having whereas today with the old CAD systems you can pick and choose when you deploy service packs and updates after they've been tested pretty much worldwide by everyone else uh, whereas with Onshape nope, you, you, you're stuck using the version that they give you and there's no rolling it back and there's no avoiding any bugs that they might deliver so it's like you it's like being able to drive a car around whilst someone else is automatically taking care of all the maintenance but the thing is mate you don't know how good that person is at maintaining the thing that you're using. So you're introducing risk there. You don't know how good the people are that are working on the bugs that you've got no choice in inheriting. All right, so here's another example of just creating problems and scaremongering into in inventing issues that aren't really a thing. Uh, it's almost like brainwashing in a way. In what world can you describe old PDM systems as being wasted IT overhead? Eliminate the check-in, check-out hassles and wasted IT overhead of old PDM systems by storing and sharing your CAD data in a secure cloud workspace. Nobody in their right mind would call a locally hosted SQL-based storage system that hosts all of your engineering data, all of your IP, all of the stuff that makes your company money, storing that locally in-house where you control the backups, the recoveries, all the disaster recovery plans, where it's all under your control. Nobody in their right mind can describe any of that as being wasted IT overhead and saying it's all a good idea to put it in the cloud and have it hosted on somebody else's infrastructure somewhere where you don't know where it is. You've got no control over the security of the access to it. No, nobody can say that that is a good idea. It's all risk. And as much as Onshape will say that, no, it's our warehouse, we, we have the best security that you could possibly imagine, it's all perfectly safe, nothing's perfectly safe, but it's going to be a lot safer if it's in-house and you've got control over who gets to it and who doesn't. So that's that's my problem with Onshape, it's the market material around it and the attitude towards the, the existing way of work and that I'm not really a massive fan of. The application itself is actually not terrible. For something that's hosted entirely within a web browser, Yes, there's the risks associated with that, and yes, I will personally never deploy that into a business and have it completely tethered to an internet connection. But 
for what it is, it's actually pretty good. It's all integrated with 3D mouse, so you can use your 3D connection Space Mouse or Space Mouse Enterprise or whatever it is you use to drive the model. The performance is actually pretty good for being hosted in a web browser, but in there lies another risk. Your CAD system is relying on your web browser. Who's to say Google? Google aren't in cahoots with Onshape. Google won't collaborate and consult with Onshape before issuing a major browser overhaul. So who's to say that one day Google will release a, an update that completely breaks the CAD system? It can happen. And Onshape have got absolutely no control over that happening either. Um, again, I'm just assuming they don't. I would imagine they don't. But um, that's a risk. It has to be. Um, but aside from that, it is lacking some functionality on even the most basic of levels when it comes to sketching, when it comes to constraints, even when it comes to major modules inside the CAD system. I mentioned earlier on that it doesn't have rendering, it doesn't have simulation. It's missing major components that you'll get inside Inventor, and that justifies the price tag that Inventor has, uh, that Onshape can't command. But um, yeah, you can see here, we're, we're, we're holding an assembly of, of a pretty decent size quite well. Here's the equivalent in Autodesk Inventor. You can see the graphics and the visualization inside Inventor is a hell of a lot better. It really is. And you can see what Onshape's doing here to be able to cope with an assembly of this size. All the circles have turned into <laughs> multi-sided shapes. Uh, there isn't a single circle in sight here. Um, like this here. that there is pretty embarrassing that should look like like that there so that's pretty poor uh, and this is an 860 part assembly there's only 90 physical documents here but there's 860 occurrences and um, an on shape struggling to maintain visual fidelity with it but jumping around in and out of components is pretty quick uh, creating a drawing is pretty quick being able to smash down a number of views do section views detail views it was all pretty quick you can see the influence of Inventor and SolidWorks in Onshape. A lot of the commands have been mirrored and in some cases just lifted straight out. Same icons in some instances with the same command names, but there is quite a lot missing there. So at the moment, I'm just gonna wrap this up now because I could go on forever with this. At the moment, it's pretty good if you're somebody who's just designing something at home or you're a startup and you've got no real interest at the moment in protecting any IP, uh, you can use it for free. But as it stands right now, from what I've seen of just the modeling application and what it has to offer, I haven't used the PDM yet because uh, obviously I'm not going to. I'm not about to spend two grand to find out that it's not very good, perhaps. But as it stands right now, under no circumstances could I possibly entertain that for a business and be tethered to an internet connection as a result of it. That's that's not great. It's really not great. The price tag when you can get Inventor and Vault for only $180 more. So um, great for hobbyists, great for anybody looking to just play around with 3D modeling and get the hang of it because there will be a pretty easy transition from Onshape to another CAD application because uh, of the, the such familiarities between the, the, the program. So here's the, here's the main homepage of Onshape which if you go to any desktop computer you'll get access to which is which is quite nice i do like the idea of that just being able to go to any computer in the world sign into your on shape account and you you've got all your models there and you can just start drafting without the need to do any installs that there is an appeal to that but not at a corporate level that's not something that's really all that enticing everyone does have fixed workstations that's just the way it is people have fixed desks with fixed workstations uh, the mobile app isn't great from what I've seen. I've tried to open this jet engine model on the mobile app and it just died. It just froze. It couldn't cope with the size of the data set. So I wasn't able to do any testing or playing around with the mobile app. It just it just wouldn't it wouldn't deal with it. But um starting a new document from scratch, the first time I loaded this up, there was a bit of playing around that I had to do in Google Chrome. I had to enable hardware acceleration in Google Chrome. It didn't like that. But once I got that out of the way, that was fine. Um, but you can see the sketch tools along the top, very similar to Inventor. The icons are very similar. These constraint icons are indeed very similar. The names are similar, coincident, uh, concentric, parallel, tangent, very similar to what you've got inside Autodesk Inventor. 
the the methods for creating geometry center point circle three point circles you've got your three point arcs you've got uh, I can't see splines it's got a line is that a spline oh yeah spline spline point um, the methods for drafting are a little bit old school you can't dynamically type in dimensions as you're sketching you have to create the line first and then type in the the value afterwards you can't link parameters together so if you were to create a like a circle which is 40 mil then do a, a larger concentric circle you can't say make that the same dimension as the inner circle plus 20 mil for example uh, which is something that inventor has been able to do for a few years and i would imagine solidworks can do so all this modern card finally it's not actually it's not materializing into anything in the product as such it's all to do with it being web hosted but in terms of functionality there's not a great deal amount of modern functionality that i can see here um graphically it's not great functionally wise it's not great so um fine for new starters people looking to learn 3d cad uh, with the view to then progress on to something more matured later on great for that but in business i can't i can't see how this is an, a viable alternative to solidworks or inventor at this point in time and i absolutely cannot understand how they can justify charging this kind of price tag at the level it's at right now with the functionality that it's got right now so i know i've waffled on quite a lot in this video but there's a couple of points i wanted to add uh, obviously after i'd finished recording because they will get brought up in the comments in, in once the video goes live and i'll have wished i'd talked about them I've made quite a big deal in this video about software as a service and, and the risks associated with that. And I just don't want it to sound like I'm scaremongering people into thinking that their internet connection is going to go down all the time and everyone's going to go offline on a daily basis. That's obviously not the case. It's quite a rare occurrence these days that your internet connection does go down and completely offline for a number of hours or even a number of days. Uh, especially in you know business parks, in, uh, in industrial complexes. It's not something that happens on the regular, but it can happen. That risk is there. And there's only one person that can decide which risk is bigger than the other. Do you want to have all your infrastructure hosted locally with the staff costs associated with that, all the infrastructure costs versus the risk of putting everything up in the cloud? There are businesses out there that want to go 100% lean and have everything as a service, all cloud hosted infrastructure, you know, Amazon Web Services, Azure, that kind of thing and um, just offload all of that resource into the cloud so that everything runs lean internally. That is bringing risks on board, but of course you're eliminating costs that uh, you would otherwise have had locally. That's up to you. One way or the other, that's up to you. But I just wanted to make a point of saying that it's not something that's going to happen all the time. Having local desktops with a client on, yes, you're going to have application crashes for maybe one or two users every day versus the risk of everything being in the cloud internet connection goes offline your entire company goes off you know that's something which only you can decide is worth it one way or the other uh, and obviously as you can see on screen as well i've just did a quick google search for google chrome crash because i was just thinking afterwards that when you've got a cat application or any application really that you've paid for and that you're using the vendor of that application is 100 percent in control of the infrastructure around that application uh, whereas with Onshape, it's not. They're running and relying on the likes of Google for Google Chrome, Mozilla for Mozilla Firefox, Microsoft for Microsoft Edge, and whichever other browser you're using to, to host Onshape. Uh, Onshape are relying on those other companies, those third-party companies, for support for the browser. And those browsers do experience crashes. It happens quite frequently. As you can see, there's 40 million hits for just Google Chrome crash. Obviously, a lot of that will be junk, but it's something that is a thing. And if you do experience, and this this is a real thing that will happen, if you experience stability problems with Onshape running in Google Chrome, for example, who do you go to? Do you go to Google? Are Google going to entertain you saying, I've got a problem with Onshape running in your web browser? Google might just say, well, there's absolutely nothing we can do about that. We can't test for that. Whereas Onshape might say, well, it's a browser problem. And then you might get stuck in this perpetual loop of one company blaming the other for the stability issues. Going back to the issue before with Bard saying that there's no headaches associated with Onshape, I can see that being a potential headache in the future. Uh, but again, that's all that's all some, across that bridge when it comes to it type of stuff. But it's still something that I would want to think about prior to to making the jump into using something hosted in a in a third party browser. So uh, anyway, back to the, back to the outro. I think I've been pretty fair, and um, everything that I've said has been backed up from 
personally what I've seen and experienced myself. So um, I invite them to, to get in touch if they need any feedback, but I wouldn't imagine they do. They've got solid foundations. They've got a lot of experience in-house, which is why I'm a little bit confused if the product's so incomplete at this point for the price. But um, I'm open to being contacted by them if they do want to touch base with anything and, uh, and, and discuss anything that I've talked about. Reek then, thank you very much for making it all the way through to the end, and I'll see you in the next video. Toodles! Thank you.